Hello and welcome to this video which is in our engine snack series. I'm Grandmaster Matthew Sadler and we are taking a look at a different part of the game between Berserk and Invictus from the TCEC Season 22 Qualification League. Quite interesting struggle, it's a, it's a Rilo Pairs and um, I mean you have these openings where um, you always feel that um, the black really needs to exchange a couple of sets of minor pieces. Um, otherwise, black won't have enough room for, for all of its pieces within the pawn structure. And, uh, you know, if you're talking about the Rai Lopez, um, if I just point you to this famous game, Karpov against Unzika from uh, the Olympiad 1974, then you can see what I mean. I mean, uh, just within that space, black would really love to be uh, rid of a couple of its minor pieces and actually be able to do something with them. So, um, you know, that's one of the, the major struggles. And actually, it's not just in the Rai Lopez. Uh, for example, um, if you look at the Queen's Gambit Declined, one of the most famous systems in there is the Lasca system, still popular to this day, but where Black's idea is to uh, get rid of a couple of minor pieces. I mean, uh, White gains some time and a little bit of a space advantage, but with a couple of minor pieces gone, Black's got enough space for the rest of its pieces. And uh, yeah, I mean, you see this uh, an awful lot in the uh, in the Lopez and uh, especially um, um, in modern Lopez systems. One other thing that black often does is to play um, E takes D4 reasonably early, C takes D4, just open up the center, get a little bit of space, and then black tries to play actively with its pieces and, uh, well, maybe manage to uh, exchange a few along the way. Um, but the key thing for white always is to try and maintain control over black's queenside pieces. Um, normally a bishop on b7, light squared bishop and a knight. Um, and also, you know, try and deal at the same time with the, uh, with the dark squared bishop. And um, yeah, I mean, lots of classic games in this, but uh, I was just playing through uh, Berserk against Invictus. And I thought that Berserk had done this really well as well here. So let's have a look how it went. So um, after knight b6, uh, black is going to manage to exchange off one set of minor pieces. That's pretty cool. So one knight is going to be exchanged for the bishop. Um, what Berserk does is uh, take on c6, bishop c6, d5, setting up this, uh, this uh, barrier on the h1a8 diagonal, bishop b7, so the bishop's only looking at that one, and then this move bishop e3. And uh, important idea here, I mean, you're, um, uh, you've got a a couple of possibilities actually. One idea could be, uh, and this was something that Anand did against uh, uh, Kamsky in a, a very famous game, could be to play bishop takes b6 um, and after c takes b6 then yeah black's light square bishop does have some problems because black's lost this c6 break to attack the pawn on d5. The other idea is the one that uh, Berserk implements in the game, and that's just to exchange off the dark squared bishops. Exchange off the opponent's active pieces, leave him with passive pieces. The dark squared bishop is active because we're, uh, well, it's got activated because we're trying to block out the light squared bishop with a, a light squared pawn structure, so let's swap off the dark squared bishop. So up to g6, queen d3, hitting the pawn on b5, knight c4, Berserk played bishop d4 here. Just uh, going to uh, exchange off the um, uh, the dark square bishops, and I imagine as well that um, something that tempted Berserk, you know, um, rather than taking on b6, but to try and swap off the dark square bishops, was that Black had just played this move g6, because now once the dark square bishop goes, there'll be plenty of weak uh, dark squares to attack. So uh, c5 played by um, uh, Invictus takes takes, queen c3. Um, very nice move, always trying to force the opponent to take, exchange off pieces on your terms. If you take on f6 straight away, then the uh, the black queen comes to f6, gets active. So here queen c3 played to um, say, well, if bishop takes d4, I'm going to get knight takes d4 in with tempo, hitting the bishop and the pawn. So um, bishop b7 played by Invictus, rather risky, letting go of that uh, of that long diagonal. And now this lovely move b3 takes takes the knight goes back to a5 and queen d2 and uh, well if you look at the result of what white's done uh, this bishop well the pawn on d5 is gone but e4 is still solid as a rock defended by knight g3 rook e1 this knight is kept out by the pawn on b3 so it's passive nothing much to do and uh, on the dark squares well actually uh, 
by offering the exchange of bishops, we've actually got a great diagonal for this bishop. And, uh, well, Berserk's queen is going to line up and we're going to have all sorts of attacks like knight f5 or knight h5. And if you just have a quick look at uh, what happened there, you can just see that uh, um, this got pretty painful. Knight on h2, same manoeuvre we saw from, uh, from Zach earlier, coming into h6. And then this lovely move, knight f5. Um, bishop f5, ef5, black has got rid of the light squared bishop, still got the knight on a5, and now there's big threats against the king's side. Knight g4, queen g4, horrible. Um, Invictus managed to defend for a little while, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, Berserk uh, won a very convincing game, and we saw the, uh, the rook ending later. So yeah, just a very nice, typical um, Rai Lopez theme there from um, from uh, um, from Berserk here. First of all, uh, you know the problems Black has with too many pieces for its structure, um, and then White's efforts both to restrict, really make passive two of Black's queenside pieces, and then well, whilst doing that, you activate this one. So Berserk looking to exchange it, exchange the active pieces leave black with the uh, the opponent with passive pieces and it works um you know really really beautifully and uh well this is kind of a, a dream lopez position for white lovely play from uh, from berserk that's looked yeah really impressive in uh, in ql and we're expecting it to go a long way in season 22.